Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a parametric uh, 3D color scheme. So on the right side I have a floor plan with a color scheme apply. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do some changes in this color scheme. So what I'll do when I have enabled the view is just to scroll down to the properties of the view, click on the color scheme, and I'm going to change the instruction color from a gray color something that's uh, yellow. Um, in addition, maybe I'm just gonna change a name here so that I can create a new color. I want to call this testing. Alright, so um, obviously on the left side those changes don't appear to be evident, right? When I click uh, this um, from left to right, if I click this uh, boolean from true to false, um, I run it again you are going to notice that uh, the changes in the color scheme are translated into the floor plan. So how do we do this? Uh, let me just uh, quickly run through the uh, code. So I start uh, by collecting all the elements. I, what I need to have installed, it's, uh, I did this with Dynamo 1.0 and I also need to have installed the Clockworks package, the Lunchbox package, and the Rhythm package. So I'll start by showing the first part of the, of the code which is collecting all the rooms in the projects which, also, which uh, will display the boundaries, the name, the numbers of it. And I'll start uh, looking at the boundaries. The boundaries uh, I select all the boundaries in the project, convert them into a poly curves, which then are converted into surfaces, and then uh, uh, I have a list of surfaces in the Dynamo space. The next part of that is to assign or select the color scheme of the definition. So in this group of nodes, what I do is uh, I select a view in the project, convert it into an image, uh, and then pick pixels out of that image based on uh, numerical ratio. Uh, remove the white color out of this image, and I'm going to list I'm going to uh, end up with a list of colors. Now the image that I created in turn, it's uh, this image called Color Scheme and all it is, it's a it's a flat uh, color scheme legend that it's uh, been removed uh, from, it's isolated into a view it doesn't have a boundary and navel. And just to show you how it was created, I mean in the type properties of this color scheme, what I did is um, make swatches one inch by one inch, um, <coughs> make um, the font an adobe blank. This is a special type of font that what it does, it makes uh, text invisible. And if you don't have the Adobe Blank install, all you need to do is Google it. So here in Adobe, in, in Google, I just, I just search for Adobe Blank uh, font. And you're going to find it. The very first 
uh, search result on the list enable me to download the Adobe Blank TrueType font you may need to close Revit and restart in order to get the TrueType font enabled and the reason I'm doing this is because I need a view that does not have any black color obviously the legend title is going to uh, have a black color and that's why I wanted to disable it and then uh, the other thing I did is um, override the projection color of the boundaries to white so when I went to override element by view I selected the white color so that this doesn't have any um, residual black and um, the view is cropped just uh, quickly show you the boundaries uh, this is what this original, re original view looked like it's actually a floor plan uh, but when I crop it it's uh, the view it's all that is left in the view it's a um, color scheme alright so what the the Dynamo is doing is actually exporting that crop region of the legend and uh, displaying those colors in a row, in a single row. And then what I'm doing with this uh, image pixels, it's uh, grabbing a sample of the colors exported into that image and this give me a list of all the different swatches after removing the white color uh, which is actually the first choice in this list because uh, right here this is the very first pixel the line picked and um, the color white which is RGB 255 it's always going to be at the top of the list and um, will be removed from these choices then what I need to do is to be able to map the colors with uh, the names so what I do here is to select the list of all the room names sort them alphabetically and then uh, using this note from Clockworks I create like a library of definitions so <clears throat> I map the different uh, name variations I'll sort it alphabet alphabetically with a specific key these in turns are gonna help me match the color with uh, the name so I repeat the procedure using the clockwork node and what this enable me to do is to map uh, the different color swatches which are sorted alphabetically um, with uh, the different uh, name values and what I end up happening having is uh, a map of all the colors associated with the uh, names uh, display the color in Dynamo and then override the color in the view um, and obviously I need to import uh, the surfaces into uh, Revit using the direct shape by geometry so uh, running uh, the a quick view of the workflow from the left to right um, I collect uh, all the uh, rooms in the project convert it into surfaces assign a unique name to each of the color variation and then I map them using uh, the match with key values convert the surfaces into uh, Revit objects and override the color in view with the colors that were created or were mapped 
using the color scheme uh, definition as selected by an image. So what is the purpose of this uh, rhythm? Uh, so uh, one of the troubles with uh, this workflow is that I uh, Dynamo doesn't like to refresh uh, the workflows. So I need to find a way to force this to happen by um, creating a dummy toggle. And uh, this node called Ayuda helped me to do that. So what is doing this? Uh, by switching the boolean to false and then again to true it's forcing Revit, it's forcing Dynamo uh, to create a new image file which in turn is going to refresh uh, the RGB colors on the upper side. So just to test this quickly again I'm going to uh, say I'm going to create I'm going to change the color definitions for these um, seating space so in uh, the properties of the view, I will uh, look at the uh, color scheme, go to the seating space, change the RGB color to uh, magenta, and then in, or then in order to apply this change, which is uh, in this room over here, I'll have to run the definition again by switching uh, the boolean uh, to false. What this does is going to remove all the existing uh, surfaces uh, and then change it back to through, run it and uh, the color scheme will be recreated and reapply to all the surfaces. There you go. So uh, the objects that you see on the Revit space are just imported generic models uh, with uh, the room name. But certainly uh, the name could be based on a different value. Uh, or I just picked the room name to be the type number of the type name of each of these surfaces. Alright, I hope this helped. Talk to the next one.